Tiger fans, what's going on, guys? So, it's been two weeks since my last video, and I was hoping by now that there would be at least something uh, even worth making a video to even come on and comment about, uh, just so I can, you know, keep keep producing videos during the off-season on my channel. And what it's looking like is the next time I come on here, we're going to have to do a baseball banter, basically kind of talk about the season for next year, because... Here's your Tigers update. Oh, yep, that's it. Like, literally, literally nothing. So, last time we talked, my brother was on here, and we had talked about basically where the franchise was sitting. We were both really happy about Joe, uh, Joe Jimenez getting traded. Uh, J. Ham Malloy being the centerpiece of that trade. And I think that we're just going to have to be patient. A lot of people, and I said this in my last video with my brother, but I'm going to reiterate this. Scott Harris coming into this kind of put his foot in his mouth. When you have a team that hasn't had a above 500 record since 2016, Avila ripped it down after 2016. Actually, and he tried to win at 17, but, you know, that didn't happen. But really started ripping it down on the deadline of 17. They were supposed to build through the draft. And what have we saw since 2016? Just garbage baseball after garbage baseball. Well, when Avila finally long gets ousted and Scott Harris comes in and talks about how there's going to be moves made this offseason. The roster is going to change. They're going to look at everyone and evaluate. That kind of leaves the door open for everyone, thinking that all of a sudden the Tigers are going to go from 0 to 100 and try to compete, and it's going to be 2016 again. There's expectations. They're going to be above 500. They're going to be in the fringe of a playoff. And with how with what happened in 21, you know, they're not that far off from being a team that was almost 500. Since then... It's been very quiet, basically on, on all fronts. Now, if you're having an off-season review of everything that happened in the front office, the Tigers have been extremely busy. Whether it's been the revamp of the minor league system, whether it's been the revamp of the coaching staff, everything else. But I think Tiger fans, some of it being Scott Harris being misleading, are just going to have to be patient because Scott Harris is not, is not Dave Dombrowski. Scott Harris is not Steve Cohen. Scott Harris... Is not Andrew Friedman. They're not. He's not that kind of general manager. He, he doesn't have that kind of ownership to where they're going to go through and spend through his problems. Scott Harris is a guy who's cut from the player development cloth. Scott Harris worked underneath Theo Epstein and all those guys. All of that same ilk where they want to build in Ben Sherrington. Look what he's doing in Pittsburgh for player development. Look how many years they've been bad with Ben Sherrington and how good their farm system is and like guys like O'Neill Cruz and Brian Reynolds and everything else uh, who are all, you know, coming up. Not that the Pirates are going to be anything special next, next year, but how they built, how Theo built the Cubs. That's the kind of, of president that Scott Harris is. He's not going to go out and add money. He's not going to go out and add contracts. He's not going to go out and get a big-time player when the Tigers are still so far away from competing. And I also had made the point in my last video that the Tigers had a good offense in 2021. The Tigers were not a bad team in 2021 at all. If you look from May on, they were well above 500 squad. They only finished a few games under 500. A lot of people picked us last year to be a fringe wildcard team. So, coming into next year, 2022, I think Scott Harris looks at as a little bit of an anomaly. I think he looks at talent. And I think he looks at results versus previous results versus expected results. And he sees more out of the team that they didn't show last year. He sees more, you know, of hopefully 125, 130 games of Austin Meadows. He sees Javier Baez uh, having a bounce back year. You know, I think they still have a lot of, they have a lot of faith in the young guys, whether it's Spencer Torkelson. And a quick Torkelson update. He finally posted, Torkelson's been very tight lip on his social media really for a while now since his struggles. Uh, and he had posted a video today of him swinging, and it looks like Torkelson changed his swing a little bit. 
Uh, if you watch his, go on his Instagram story and compare it. I wish I had a video editor because I'd put the clips in to show you what I'm talking about. But the way his front foot is, he's no longer like lifting up and with a big, with not, not that he ever had a big leg kick, but he's no longer like lifting his foot up to like ankle high and setting it down. He's basically lifting his foot up, barely ending off the ground and just setting it straight down while striding towards the pitcher. Also, Torkelson's always been a finished two-hand swing through the zone. Perfect example right there. Now, if you go watch Torkelson on his uh, Instagram story, Torkelson is now going one hand off of the bat. He's coming all the way through the zone and one hand off of the bat. And I was like, well, I wonder if he's ever done this before. If you watch all his home runs and you even go back and look at his USA uh, team uh, and when he was in college and everything else, he was always two hands through the bat. Now, if you look at him right here, perfect example, you can see how like leaned back he is in his swing. So basically, he's coming through. He made contact. That was probably a home run. Uh, you can see how basically leaned back he is in his swing. Now, if you look at him in his Instagram story, his hands are about right up about his ear. And instead of being leaned back, well, this is weird doing this, I guess. Instead of being leaned back like this, He's now like a little more like this, a little more upright, and his hands are coming off of the bat. So I'm wondering if they put his hands up a little higher to try to keep him from dipping. And you could see how naturally leaned back he was in his swing uh, and just how back on it, his backside he was. I wonder if they're trying to get him a little more upright, his hands a little higher to try to keep him from dropping his back arm and trying to be, dip, put his foot down faster so he's got longer pitch recognition try to get his hands through the zone quicker, try to keep his hands in the bat path more, and also try to keep him a little more balanced through the zone so he's not dipping and popping everything up like we saw. So that was a positive sign. Anyways, back to the point. This is just video is going to be all over the place because I'm just trying to make a Tigers video so we have something to talk about here. Harris sees more out of 2023 because he's seen what 2021 was, seen what 2022 was. He knows the players on the team. You know, Jay Hemeloy could come up this year and be a contributor sometime through, but we already saw what happens when you rely on so many rookies. You know, you win 65 games, and, you know, I think he also thinks that the amount of injuries that they had is an, is something that they are not going to replicate in 2023. The simple fact, the amount of injuries they had, is just something that is, one, kind of fluky. Two, it's kind of a year-by-year -year thing. And three... There's just no way in hell they have that many starters hurt back-to-back -back years. So I think this year is kind of – they're just not going to do much. There's not going to be a big splash. There's not going to be a, a you know a, a huge trade or nothing. I think Harris solely wants to put his people in place. He wants to see what his player development people do, what they're able to do with this major league roster with his analytics, his people, his philosophies, his viewpoints, along with Hinch under this new regime, how Hinch goes along with it. Because I think he thinks that with all these people believing in this new philosophy, this new regime, plus seeing what 2021 was, how good the offense was, plus these players' career norms, that there's more in it. I mean, you got to think about it. And I'm not saying it's going to happen. This is what ifs, you know. If you, you, It's the what if game solely. But if you look at this team and you have Austin Meadows played a career averages where that's 260, 255 with 18, 19 home runs. You have Javier Baez. I think he averaged 26 home runs. You have Jonathan Scope where he's like an average of 18 home runs kind of guy. You know, where Spencer Torkelson is, hits above 210 with what he had done in his career, you know, he's probably a 250, 260 hitter with a 15 to 20 home run power right now in his career. You have Riley Green for a whole season. He's probably good for 15, 20 home runs. Uh, you have Eric Haas for an entire season. You don't know how good Jake Rogers is going to be. My point being is, Listen, we know how bad the team performed last year. We know how bad the team looked. We know how bad they are overall, and we know the holes. They don't have a third baseman. They have no fucking idea what's going on in the outfield. They're just getting a bunch of reclamation relievers so far off of, you know, fucking waivers. That's all it's been. You know, there's a lot of glaring holes, and this team is probably not going to be anything special next year. You know, they win 75 games next year, 73 games next year. whoop de doo They won a few games more, but they still sucked. It is what it is. But 
I think they think there's more in this roster that they didn't show last year. Last year was a fluke year. They had five of the worst hitters in all of MLB rostered on their team last year. And I think they think that there's more in it and that this year that these players who had all their career worst years all at the same time are all going to come more back up to what their baseball cards numbers say. And, you know, they're going to be better, which would, is going to lead to more wins. I don't know. Personally, they fucking suck. I mean, it is what it is. Like, call a spade a spade. They, they fucking suck. And they're going to suck next year. But I I just don't I don't know what people expected them to do. They weren't getting Carlos Rodon. They're not signing Carlos Correa if the Mets deal falls through. They're, they weren't going to sign Aaron Judge. You know, they weren't getting Trey Turner as much as I would have loved that. They, they're not getting Trey Turner. I think this year is just a let's see what it is kind of year. And as much as it hurts us as a fan base to have to watch another eight months of this bullshit when it comes February to October, it just is what it is. But that does leave the door open that we could be surprised. I don't know. They're not going to win the division. They're not going to be above 500 team. That That's just set in stone. But we weren't expecting it in 21. When all of a sudden Eric Haas comes out of nowhere and hits 20-some home runs. And Candelario led the league in doubles. And Jonathan Scope had 20-some home runs. You know, we weren't expecting all that in, in 2021. And they were above 500 from May until on after starting 9-23. and 23. We weren't expecting that. And it did happen. And it was a good summer of baseball. It was fun to watch. This year it could be the same. Torkelson could finally hit green for a whole season. Like I said, with Meadows and Baez come back to their career averages, and Meadows actually is on the field, and, and Jonathan Scope actually shows more of what he was career average-wise, and then Jahan Malloy comes up, and it's a better situation because not all the pressure is all on all on all rookies. They actually have some veterans hitting like they're supposed to be. You know, that's kind of like a fuck around and find out because if that happens, you know, the Tigers aren't a 65-1 team. They could be a 75-78 to 78 one team, and they look a lot better, and you go, oh, okay, well, this is what they were expecting. This is the bounce back that they were expecting uh, because these players are playing more towards this career norm. And then you look into going to 2024, they go, okay, well, we won 78, 78 wins. Scope's gone. They're not going to extend him even if he fucking hits 75 home runs next year. They go out and, you know, they improve their team you know, improve, get another pitcher or get another whatever they need, whatever the new glaring holes are at the end of 2023, and they get someone of, of ilk, someone of stature, someone that's got a resume, and then all of a sudden, you know, coming to 2024, they add someone bigger, and then, you know, you got all these guys now because you got a core. Like, okay, well, Torkelson was good enough to be considered our first baseman in the future still, and Riley Green's still the stalwart of the team, and Jay Malloy definitely showed like he's a building block, and we still got Austin Meadows for another year, and hopefully fucking Javier Baez opts out because he was a beast next year, and his contract's gone, and someone else can have that for his last whatever amount of years he would have. You know, then, you're, then you could start to see these pieces kind of fit and kind of take shape, and then you go, okay, well, this is why Scott Harris didn't do do anything major in the off season of 20 of 2022 going to 2023 because they were basically figuring out his core his plan his future their player development you know and then you don't know what's going to happen in 23 there's a lot of guys that we that could step up that we don't even know about yet you know no one expected Bo Brisky or Alex Fayero to be contributors like they were this past year it was circumstance because of injuries this next year you know Wilmer Flores and Reese Olsen are really close, and they're knocking on the door. Who knows what those guys do? And who knows the kind of steps that guys like Colt Keith and Isaac Pacheco and Ty Madden and Jackson Job and Jace Young make through the system this upcoming year? All those guys, you give them another year of development under Scott Harris development, where he's extremely player developed player development oriented all those guys get another year into 23 and then you go into 24 and then all of a sudden say the, those guys you got uh progress how they hope they progress and all of a sudden you got instead of only having one top 100 prospect now you're back up to five and these guys are progressing and they go from a ball to triple ball or double ball and then all of a sudden they're knocking on the door for 24 and you got all this core talent that could be potentially waiting you know and then they go out and add someone in 24 and they're upper major league core is finally like a little bit more set in stone and then you know you're gonna have Casey Mize back I think there's just a my, my point is is this is fucking flowers and roses and rainbows and unicorns kind of thing and it's wishful thinking but I think you have to think how they're thinking is the point I need to say thinking one more time because I didn't say it enough 
He set himself up for expectations to be too great too fast. Undoubtedly put his foot in his mouth 100%. But you have to think how they're thinking. They're thinking there's more in this team that they didn't show last year because everyone had so many career down years. They think that with a year more of player development with their people in place, their philosophy in place, their game plan in place, that it's not only going to affect the major league level to be better, it's going to run all the way down to the roots, which is top to bottom, A ball up, rookie ball up. So 2023, it is what it is. Simple as that, flat out. But I think if we bear one more shitty season, that could be potentially okay-ish, you know, considering, you know, we don't know what it's going to be. If these, if these guys all play more towards a career norm, it could be more like 21 than it was 22. Then 24 could be potentially where we go, okay, this team is a fringe wildcard team. 24 could be how 22 was supposed to be this year, where people go, okay, the Tigers could be a wildcard team because they progressed so much in 21, you know. So that's what I'm thinking that they're thinking. That's where I'm, where I think the organization set point it's at. I think Harris stuck his foot in his mouth. He shouldn't have made so many comments. He made it seem like the whole fucking roster was going to be 180 and all of a sudden there's going to be a new face, a new spot every in every single position, and then every, we're going to go out and get someone established. No. I was a little bit pissed about it. I made a video on here a little bit pissed about it. I can understand why the fan base is pissed about it. But you got to look at what's going on with the organization and where they're at prospect wise major league wise and their philosophy wise so hang tight tiger fans hopefully you know they they get a they need a third baseman hopefully you at least get someone to help fill some of these holes and we'll just go from there so i'll be back with my brother sometime soon and we're gonna do uh detroit tigers new year's resolutions for 2023 have a good one guys go tigers